Elementor 3.17 was only a few weeks ago and here we are already with Elementor 3.18. Let's take a look at the most interesting things to see what we can implement on our future websites. So let's get started. We can now disable widgets from the widget panel so that they don't show up over here so that our editor becomes faster. And let's be honest, sometimes the editor loads pretty slowly. It takes like seconds. So everything to make that faster is very nice. You can simply go over here and now we have this new option called Element Manager. Elementor still hasn't decided whether they call these things widgets or elements. <laughs> so this is called Element Manager, even though you could also call it Widget Manager. If you slide a widget off right here, for example, the button, you click on save the changes, they will not just disappear from the editor. Right now I cannot find the button anymore, but it will also delete all of the buttons you have used on your website. So what I'm gonna do from now on is for all projects in the beginning, I'm gonna turn off all of the widgets that I don't use on most projects. For the simple reason that the editing experience inside of Elementor is just snappier and faster. But then the question of course is, what widgets do you turn off? Especially when you don't know Elementor that well, you don't know what you should turn on and should turn off. But I made it easy for you guys. I went through the whole list and made a list of widgets that you rarely use on most websites or widgets that are basically replaced now by newer widgets. So let's take a look at it. The first row of widgets was useful before we had the loop grid widgets. So if you know how to work with the loop item in the theme builder and then use the loop grid widget to make a list, then you don't need these four widgets anymore. These widgets, by the way, they only show up when you work with WooCommerce, but on all websites, you always have these two widgets. So you can turn them off if you know how to work with the loop grid widget, because it's simply a lot better. These ones are all great before we had the new carousel widget. The new carousel widget is amazing. We also have the loop carousel widget, which allows you to load in posts. Uh, that was simply not possible before. The new carousel and loop carousel widget replace everything you see right here. So all of these widgets, we don't need them anymore. Some of these, you could also make them with the container because not all of them have this slider effect but you get the point. These ones can also be done with the container. I know many people like to use the pricing table widget, but the customization is not that great. If you just spend a little bit of time understanding the container, then you will have much more design freedom and you don't need these widgets anymore. They have some features though, which are a bit hard to do with the container, but again, the container is just simply better. Then we go to a list of the widgets that you rarely use. I'm not gonna go all over them. Just take a screenshot of this and then see if you actually use those widgets. For example, the Facebook widgets, I've never used them. Maybe one time I've added a Facebook like button somewhere. And then the last list is all the WordPress widgets. I've never used the WordPress widgets, mainly because the Elementor widgets are a lot better because they allow you to customize the content and the styling a lot more than these default ones. So I hope that that can give you some inspiration on what to turn off for your next project. By the way, there are five things I think you should know about this new feature. Let's say that you have a website right now that just loads really slowly and you're just a bit annoyed by it. You can just go to the top over here and click on scan element or usage. Oh, sorry, element usage. <laughs> and then you can see I've used the heading widgets almost 400 times, etc. But then from here, you can see all the widgets that I haven't used on this website. And there's a simple button over here called deactivate unused elements. And then if you click on save, and you go back and you refresh, then it will only show the widgets that you actually used on this website. Of course, this doesn't help you while you are developing. This is only after development, but sometimes it happens. You log into an older website and it's just really slow. Now you just have one button to use the unused widgets off and then your website editor will be faster. The second thing you should know is that it doesn't only include Elementor widgets, but if you have installed other plugins that also add widgets like Jet Engine or any Elementor add-on, they will also display over here and you can easily filter them. And then you can see that I didn't use these five widgets from Jet Engine and you can also easily turn them off. Unfortunately, they don't have a button disable this whole list, which they should add, because right now I have to click, 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 click <laughs> because in the beginning of a project you haven't used any of the widgets yet so you cannot use this feature so please elementor if you're seeing this add a feature like here to select all of them 
that are part of the filtered list. So not all the widgets, but just the one that I've selected over here. Third thing is that if you accidentally turn a widget off that you have used on your website, then it will not appear on your website anymore, but it's not deleted from the server. So that means that when you turn it back on and you click on save, your old widgets will still be there with all of the content. The fourth thing that you should know is that it has a search feature, which makes it a little bit easier. But here's also a suggestion for Elementor. It would be great if we could save a preset somewhere or upload a file somewhere and say like, hey, this list of widgets I don't use on almost all websites. Can you just disable them, right? Uh, maybe it could be connected to your Elementor account, something like that. It would be great because right now it's quite a bit of work to turn off all of these widgets at the beginning of a project. And the fifth thing is that disabling these widgets does not make your website faster on the front end, only here on the back end. So that means inside of the editor, but not on the actual website for visitors. And of course, people want faster Elementor websites. So this guy on Facebook said, the real game changer would be to improve pages website loading when unused widgets are disabled and not loaded. And then somebody from Elementor said, this feature was already available since we introduced the following features. Optimized DOM, improved asset loading and improved CSS loading. These features can be found in the settings and then features. Here you can see them. They are already turned on by default, but this already ensures that the widgets that you don't use are not loaded on the front end. So Elementor had already tackled that. I also didn't know. It's great, but for now we just got a better editing experience. The next feature is multi-select for the taxonomy filter. The taxonomy filter is still an alpha feature, but it works pretty well already. It allows you to add a filter to your post page, to your post archive page. So you can only show the post in a specific category. I am not sure if I spelled apartments right. <laughs> so what you need on your page is a loop grid with a loop item that shows all of the loops on your page. So make sure to also select the right query. And then you add the taxonomy filter widget. You select the loop grid, which is not the loop template, but just the loop you want to filter on this page because sometimes you have multiple loop grids on a page. Right now I only have one. Then you select the taxonomy, which can be the default post taxonomy or a taxonomy that you created with a custom post type plugin like ACF or Jet Engine. And then when you go to settings, we have the new feature over here called multiple selection. By default, this is turned off. So that means that when you click on a category and then you click on another one, that it doesn't select both of them, it just keeps it on one. But with this feature, if you turn it on and put this on end and you click on update, then you can let people select two categories and then it will only show the posts that have two categories. For example, this house. This has two categories, houses and villas. This is great for bigger web shops where people want to filter more deeply. It's very similar to what Crocoblock has with Jet Filters. This one is still pretty basic because with Jet Filters, it's a lot better. You can just select it with checkboxes like this and you can add even more filters like price filters over here. They all work together. People can easily delete the filters from here. So Elementor has a long way to go before we have something as great as Jet Filters from Crocoblock, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. I'm very happy that Elementor is now starting with filters for custom post types. The dynamic capabilities in Elementor are getting better and better. By the way, if you see this for the first time and you're like, wow, I never knew that this was possible with Elementor, well then you should check out Crocoblock. It's on the software page. So livingwebpixels.com slash software. This company over here, if you click on Crocoblock, by the way, that's an affiliate link. So if you buy it via that link, I will get a commission, but you will also get a discount. So here you can see Jet Smart Filters, and this is the plugin that works on top of Elementor Pro, which then allows you to add filters to your web shop or to any custom post type you want. I have a 10% discount link if you want. And the last one, which is interesting, is that if you have a lot of categories, you can enable horizontal scroll, which then makes it able to scroll on a horizontal access on a mobile and tablet with your finger. On desktop, I hope they will add some error over here. Let's test it quickly. Okay, so they don't add anything. 
Uh, I don't know how this is going to work on desktop. I hope they will add some more features here to add some basic arrow because right now this is hard to use on desktop when there are more categories than there is space for. And the last feature is for the form widget. If you would use a upload button inside of your form, then it would always send you a link in the email where you could click on and then that linked to the file which was stored on your web server, so on your hosting package. And they say in their blog post over here, this could impact your site's available hosting space. Like, of course, if files are added to the hosting, then your hosting can fill up. Like, even if you have bigger packages here, for example, from SiteGround, 40 gigabyte. If you let users upload videos or photos to your form and your website gets a lot of traffic, then this 40 gigabyte will fill up pretty quickly. Uh, of course, it depends on the hosting provider you use. With Hostinger, you get a little bit more storage. So now Elementor has come up with a solution for that. They say you could now send the files to your email inbox instead of the hosting server. So then the files will be attached uh, as an attachment inside of the email. But then I was like, wait, does email also not have a limit to how much you can save? which I think in total is even smaller than the full storage of hosting packages. So then I asked Elementor, I'm like, hey, how is this better in terms of storage? And then they said, it's more like a convenient feature. Some people just want to have their file as attachment so that they ha don't have to click on the link and go to the server. It's just easier to manage files. So that makes sense, but it contradicts a little bit on what they're saying uh, in their blog over here. So let's see how it works. First, make sure that your Elementor and your Elementor Pro is updated because the form widget is part of Pro. Then if you open the field uh, which says file upload, then we have a new field over here called send files. Normally it's email with a link and then you can do email with attachment. You can even do email with both. And if you have a client where people do send a lot of things inside of the form, then you can also limit that by the max file size. So let's say people upload photos and you're like, okay, my web server should not get full too quickly. You can put that over here, which don't give them a notice right away. So if you do that, then I would recommend to add something in the label and say like five MB max per file something like that so that it's clear and also the allowed file types for example you can only allow jpeg and png uh, which are image files so that people don't upload anything else of course also make sure to put that in the title then and you can also limit the amount of files by default by the way the form only allows you to upload one file you have to put this on if you want people to upload multiple photos and then you can even say i want a max of five photos again make sure to add it in the title to make it clear what the rules are for this upload field protect your uh, hosting server a little bit or your client's hosting server same story nobody wants to get that email from their hosting provider saying your storage is full you need to upgrade of course sometimes you need to but here are some tips and tricks. So yeah, for now we're done, but don't forget to turn off the widgets on the websites that are a little bit slow. I'm also gonna do that right now. I'm gonna open a few websites. I'm gonna go through it and turn them off. You can make your own list or you can use my list as inspiration, but I'm definitely gonna do this. And then I hope you like this video and maybe I will see you in the next one.